My name is Celia Sangya Daniels. I identify as a gender fluid person and I express more as a trans feminine woman. And being a person of color, I grew up in India uh, since I was four years old. I knew I was different, but I told my mom about my life and the way that I was expressing myself more in feminine clothing. Uh, especially I used to cover my head with my mom's sari and I was a little bit uh, inclined towards, I felt more comfortable, you know, it was like being in an embryo of my mom. Sure, um, my name is Alex, I am 24 years old. I am a staff member at Kriyat Circle, which is an agency for older adults of color who identify as lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, gender non-conforming, non-binary, queer, and questioning. Um, I use she, her pronouns, I identify as a trans woman, um, I also am mixed race, so my father is from India, um, so I'm mixed race, queer, I even identify as pansexual because a lot of my attractions are based on the energy of the people around me as opposed to the more superficial physical aspects of a person. I identify myself as a, a, a man, so I don't want to transition nor do I want to like be a woman. I like to play both the parts, man and a woman. That's the game of illusion. And that's what my name is Maya. So I always stick by it. My name is Oleg. I'm from Russia and I'm a member of LGBTQ community. I uh, felt something uh, to the same uh, gender like me, but I thought it's like Un, 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 unknown because uh, uh, that time in Soviet Union was uh, uh, the gay life was not existing. No, actually it was existing, but it was very hided, and uh, actually uh, for small kid it was not existing. And uh, definitely I realized my wishes when I become like older, like adult person, and uh, tried very secretly. When you are going on stage, you have to be larger than life persona. While I'm Alex, I really like to conserve the energy. And I basically, I'm like, I'm like, when I'm Alex, I'm like, can I be part of the wall? Can I blend in with the wall? <laughs> so that's what I usually do. So. Ever since I was five years old, I started wearing my mom's petticoat and covering my head with a sari pretending to be a girl. I have no idea why I did that, but it was strange and it felt good. So I've had a lot of moments where I recognize, um, like I would say passive moments, ones that I Mo things that I did that I never recognized but reflect on now and say, oh my god, those were definitely moments that definitely are not what we quote unquote call heteronormative. Um, so I first and foremost came out as queer before I did trans. So for me, my queerness was just my affinities and attractions. I wanted to be normal, but many times I felt that there was a pull of the femininity in me because I knew that it was always in me. Sexuality in India is often suppressed. We're not very free to discussing that in general. And I think, uh, uh, like, like, I mean, I have no idea why that is, because today as, um, you know, um, as millennials, we are quite free and open to talking and discussing about many things, but it's not the same with our parents. For example, there are things that I can discuss with my friends that I cannot discuss with my parents. The way I saw myself and showed up in a space, how I lived my life was in a very queer way that did not go um, again, that did not live up to the norms of the society or 
even my family structure. Now, unfortunately, both my parents are not alive. And one of the things that I wanted to do is I always wanted to talk to my mom about, you know, why I was different. And the first thing is, I didn't know why I was different. And I thought I was the only unique person in this world who's different. So that is a very complicated process because you're trying to discover yourself, not knowing that there are a lot of people in this world who are like you. I did not want to do anything that would bring disgrace to our family. I lived with this guilt and shame. I felt hopeless and thought I was heading straight to hell. Like I've been through people telling me that I should not uh, do drag because it's not giving me money. I should not, um, you should, I should not do this because they think you will be misgendered in terms of being a, a transgender, uh, being a, a full-time cross-dresser. Uh, there are so many things. Even there are people who try to hurt me basically by just uh, associating with me with something which I don't associate at all. Um, I am uh, openly out uh, cis man. Uh, I who identifies as a queer person. And um, I've been performing as a drag queen since 2014. Um, it's been a hell of a lot of journey. It's been a really great roller coaster ride. a heterosexual biological male person so in my mind I my het, my sexuality has not changed but my gender is different so to explain that to, in, a, in a very simple terms I'm born as a biologically as a male person and my gender is more towards aligned towards the female side of my life but being born as a male my sexual attraction or my romantic attraction is only is still towards women so even though i express myself as celia um i i believe that you know i, I can call myself a trans lesbian <laughs> that i realized that i needed to live my life for myself not for anyone else i needed to be able to self-define as opposed to have anyone else define me for them but i also didn't want to live a life anymore of feeling like my my identity was open to debate like my existence is not debatable. And this has also become, this has also the roots in our, the, the, uh, our own orient, oriental thinking about ourselves. Where in an oriental understanding of uh, Indian male, right, specifically has always been seen as quite feminine. So we, we ourselves are not capable to define our own, uh, you know, sexual uh, orientation and how strong we can be. And once we don't accept our own, you know, gender uh, preferences, it's quite likely that we are confused with uh, what we think about the third gender. So that is also an oriental thinking that has imposed and that it has stretched our, or that has like captured our attention um, towards not thinking about the third gender. I just uh, I had a lot lot of clothes in my house and I I fabric in our uh, in, our, in our house. I made a skirt out of it and I also wore a pink T-shirt and I put a scarf on my head like a hijra, sorry like a hijab, and I stepped out of my house. And this was a little bit dark during the evening time. I walked out and I was so happy because I have never I was 13 years old when I did that. I've never been out as Celia in India and that was so refreshing, you know, the wind blowing on me in my face and blowing my skirt was like an amazing experience for a person like me. I felt like, wow, I'm out there in the world for me to know who I am. When I feel happy um, and when I feel like I'm in this, that I feel whole. 
I feel like I am a one person. Complete. Doesn't matter if I am uh, be I am Alex, I am Maya, I am Maya in a different character or anything. But I feel like I am one person, and that's what I need to feel like always. Yo yo, we are live debuting Lahore, Rajasthan's first ever single. I don't want to look like all of the other drag queens. Leggings for days and dresses for miles and gowns for weeks. Chanel and Dior and Louis Vuitton Versace. Cause I look best when I'm dressed like an auntie. Don't I look great in this sari? Now my grandparents, especially the ones from India, have a very hard time understanding A, my queerness, but definitely my transness. Um, part of it for them is the idea of binary systems, which is a very colonial way of looking at just gender, but also life in the sense that things or whatever may have you are categorized into two different distinct boxes. Um, but because my identity is so anti-colonial and actually decolonizing in many ways, mm -hmm. it's hard for them to process a life or a world where that work can happen. Um, that society where I was grew up uh, was not tolerant to the uh, gay people or gay community. Uh, they think that is uh, abnormal, uh, that is uh, must be stopped, that must be demolished. Uh, and while I was walking um, through a construction site, there was a security guard who who watched me and he kept following me for a while and then he called me he said hey come here what are you doing and i was scared and i didn't know what to do so i went and stood in front of him and he said you know what are you trying to do i said no i'm just walking around and he said nobody walks around like this you know a young person like you and he looked at me for a while and he then went back and said oh my god you're a hijra boy i didn't know you're a hijra But surprisingly, sometimes I have seen that people do not mind hijras, right? Because they they are part of some rituals. They they yeah. bring blessings and all that. So maybe they are, they are not as hu humiliated by us as we humiliate other lesbian or gay and other transgender people, because um, they are they appear to be normal when we see them. But the moment we see the, they having their uh, very different social sexual orientation, we we decre we really deny to accept that existence. Whenever I saw hijras in the street, my heart went out for them because I could identify with them. But some part of me said, you know, even if you try to be nice to somebody, then they will know that you are. Also a hijra. In ancient Hindu scripture, transgender community known as the hijras here in India were revered. It was during British colonialism that they were criminalized. Indian society has held this tension. On the one hand, they wanted their blessings in different ceremonies. On the other hand, they ostracized them in daily life, forcing many into prostitution and begging on the street. As a result, the Hijra community became closed and secretive. Almost no Indians have seen the inside world of a Hijra's life. I was never attracted to boys. It was always about girls. Their long dangling earrings, their ribbons, the colorful dresses. I was so fascinated by their outfit. I was careful not to express any of my feminine desires. I did not want my friends to think that I am a gay, a eunuch or a hijra as they call in India. It's sad how our gender construction and misconception of sexuality can affect an art form. I did a lot of research, watched many videos, read about many art forms. But when I came across this performance art, 
drag. I thought this is an excellent way to express and inspire. Why don't I explore this? It's a one-man show. From conceptualizing to performing, I do everything. If my art gives a person strength to be who they are, I have succeeded as an artist. My name is Alex Matthew and I am a drag queen. Uh, like how I was telling a lot of people that I'll keep doing drag till I die. Hi, my grandmother was trying to figure out why this was a choice, quote unquote, I would make for myself. And I had to really explain to her, this was never a choice for me. This was something I knew I always was and am. And we all need to start accepting and changing the language and our perspective around gender, but also just different identity. Because I remember there was one time when I was in my ninth grade, I, I was wearing my mom's petticoat. <laughs> And uh, my brother actually saw me in that and he made fun of me for a while. Um, and I told him, I'm just, you know, I'm just playing the fool here. I just wanted to, I kind of demystified the whole um, point of, you know, I didn't want him to know that I was different. Um, so at the moment, what I'm doing is protecting my joy because that's what's important to me. That doesn't mean I don't love a person or don't love my family. But I also know I very much love myself and I'm protecting that self-love. But what that also means too is creating boundaries for myself. Everyone has the right to create their own boundaries, which are healthy. I, I don't think I ever had a problem um, uh, from my family standpoint. It's because I knew how to hide it. And that's probably one of the reasons why I am so gender fluid. Because I learned to respect my gender and I love to express more as in the gender that I really struggled with. So to give you a percentage, I, I love you know being this guy, but I'm going to a point where being a, a, a boy is, or being a man is probably 20% of my life. And being Celia is almost like 80% of my life now. And for me, the reason I'm a man is because of my wife, the sacrifice I have to make for my family. So I feel like harassment or ver forms of whatever discrimination comes in, the f in sort of like disguises. It's not maybe overt transphobia, but it is the catcalling that is insincere appreciation also masked as sexism, masked as patriarchy that then also is targeted towards trans people, which can be read as transphobia. He made a lot of noise and I was so scared. And at that point, there were probably around five to seven um, men working in the construction site. They all stood around me and they started pointing fingers at me and they started laughing. You know, they used the most derogatory language, the most discriminating language. And you can find in the human <laughs> dictionary in India, all kinds of language and except that they didn't touch me but they were completely emotionally abusing me uh, with all kinds of filthy words so harassment is very unique for me um, as it is per individual and I'm just saying like everyone should be aware that harassment isn't just doesn't have one face it is very um, it is very minute but also very it can disguise itself. It's very difficult these days for people to give love. Yeah. So I tell encourage people for trying to be me or who see me as an inspiration that giving love is all you can do. And I do that with my art form. When you be yourself and when you start loving yourself, it's when people will see the love in you. Like a 100 rupee. Sorry. This is such a last season. Sorry. Learn to walk properly in that. Sorry. I know right now I look so fly when I rock my desi style. Hope you're doing good. The humming tree is ready for just and another house party. Woohoo! Now I better see you there or you'll be sorry. <laughs> now I'll see you soon. Bye!
Cause I'm not stressed Hashtag blessed Namaste bitch Yo yo we are live debuting Lahore Rajasthan's first ever single I don't want to look like all of the other drag queens Leggings for days and dresses for miles and gowns for weeks Chanel and Dior and Louis Vuitton Versace Cause I look best when I'm dressed like an auntie Don't I look great in this sari Cause I'm giving you this sexy body Too sexy yeah Don't I look great in this sari I know right now I look so fly when I rock my desi style That is looking like a 100 rupees sari This is such a last season sari Learn to walk properly in that sari I know right now I look so fly 